checking on our maple taps a little early today because yesterday I got 12 gallons and I was only able to get that boiled down to where I have two gallons of that left to boil but it was still dripping really strong yesterday when I collected it so I'm figuring there's still some to collect and it's probably not dripping a whole lot today because we didn't get down to a freeze last night but never know sometimes the trees will surprise you but I really gotta stay on top of it right now there's definitely not much sap flow today. This tap on the back here is dripping, but the other one wasn't. So some of these trees may still be producing a little bit, but there's a good bit in these buckets still from yesterday that continued to flow after I collected it. So me and Codge will go around and get these here in a little bit. It's supposed to rain today, hopefully not all day, because I need to get this sap boiling. And then it's not supposed to freeze tonight, so not expecting sap tomorrow, but I think after tomorrow, we should be getting sap flowing again. I finally have an update regarding the new property, the family property that we were in a partition suit over and us moving there and homesteading there. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a setback. So the final order ended up being appealed, which means we are back in court. Now, we don't actually expect for this appeal to really go anywhere. Um, I mean, there's no guarantees, but we don't expect that this is going to change anything for us moving forward with the property in the long term. However, what it definitely does is add significant time before we can do anything. So, with that being said, we're going to be obviously definitely moving forward with our garden and all that here for this year as far as what will be happening the next year. It's hard to say at this point because appeals take a really long time and hopefully this will all go through quickly and smoothly but still it's going to be you know a long process and we've already been making plans for our garden and the things that we want to do and we just keep moving forward and sometimes you know things like this is kind of like a mixed blessing because it gives us more time to think about what we want to do and how we want to do things on our next property so you know Things just work out in their own way. So there's a lot to do as we're getting into the planning stages of what we're gonna grow this year and how all that's gonna look. Our flock dynamics have greatly improved. Actually, going back to normal since we harvested three out of four of the young roosters, you know, Whitey was the one that we kept behind because he hasn't been a troublemaker. And it was so bad that the ladies would just sit on the roost all day and we were pretty sure there were times that they weren't even getting off the roost to eat because those boys were terrorizing the ladies so bad just over mating them like brutally mating them it was really terrible and nonami our head rooster if you have roosters you know that you tend to have a main guy that kind of takes care of the flock watches out for them nonami generally runs around and makes sure everybody is staying in order and he couldn't keep up with them and it was kind of interesting because they would never attack Nonami anytime he would come over to those young cockerels to stand up to them they would just scurry off there's Nonami right there it's actually Uni's brother Uni was my first pet rooster but even though Nonami is a really good rooster never shown aggression as I've said many times I still keep an eye on him because there's plenty of times where you can have a good rooster and all of a sudden he kind of turns on you and he has full spurs which it's always kind of been in the back of my mind that I might one day trim his spurs but I don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to because it's like taking his only defense away if I do that but it's been so nice to see the ladies back out and join themselves
think I brought my sap in just in time. It's starting to rain. But the whole reason that I do it like this, and this is how most people do it, is to boil off most of the water outside and then as it's getting close, it's reduced a whole lot to where you can just put it on your stove to finish it because you want to keep a close eye on it as you're turning it into actual syrup because you don't want to burn it. Um, however, years, for many years, we did all our maple syrup inside the house, boiled all our sap down inside the house, which you can do if you're doing small volumes, but you do have to keep in mind that it creates a whole lot of moisture in the house. And so you're probably gonna wanna crack, crack windows. And we would get like sugar buildup on surfaces, even the ceiling, and that would have to be wiped down all the time. And because we were running natural gas and we're doing boiling sometimes all day long, we would have to have extra ventilation because we could set off our CO alarm. But now that we're increasing our maple syrup production, we're trying to do most of our boiling outside. That way we can reduce some of the moisture in the house. And like I said, if you're doing small volumes, you can definitely do it in the house. Come on, gosh. Wow, these trees back here in the backyard, they really haven't done much up until this point, but they are dripping really good today. So I mean, sometimes it's surprising where you would think the trees wouldn't be flowing, and they actually are. And I got three gallons off these two trees just today. A little bit was from yesterday, but the way they're dripping, I'd say most of this was just today. I brought my burner inside because it was raining and I don't want it to get all rusty, but I don't have any choice other than to boil this outside today because this is going to be a lot of sap. another almost three gallons from two more trees. quite as much as yesterday. There's 12 yesterday, six, seven, eight, nine today. <sighs> A lot more boiling to do still. So. 